Save 10% with my code BOBBY10 on raw, organic, grass-fed and grass-finished freeze-dried organ meats from Grassland Nutrition. Link in the description box. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, super interesting video today. We're gonna react to the Bible proofs Prophet Moses did pilgrimage to Mecca. Interesting insight by a Jewish writer. As always, I haven't watched the video yet, so I have no idea what to expect. However, I can say this is a bold claim, of course, that Moses himself apparently pilgrimed to Mecca with no... And just when all hope seemed lost, message of a new discovery. Avi Lipkin is here. Great transition, yeah. From Israel, and he's brought his brand new book. It's called Return to Mecca. And the title of this book, Return to Mecca, what what could that possibly mean? And, and on the cover is a picture of a black cube. That's where the story starts. Avi, let's, let's start right there. Yes. Um... <clears throat> I believe that the Bible is a GPS. Uh, I believe that the Bible uh, took place, a lot of it took place in Arabia. Actually, in most churches, Christians say to me... Which it did, absolutely. There is no doubt about it. We know that Mount Sinai, the real Mount Sinai, is not in the Sinai Peninsula, but rather in northwest Saudi Arabia. It's called Jebel al uh, I am the first okay. Jew... I thought Sinai is in Egypt. In the Jewish world, was coming to the rabbis and saying, the Torah is a GPS. Uh, Jethro, the high priest of Midian, I believe was the high priest of the Kaaba, the black stone, which is today in Mecca. There was no Mecca, it was just a black stone in those days. Our father's Jethro. He's Sheik of Midian. Uh, Moses was the son-in-law of Jethro. Moses was the understudy of Jethro for 40 years. And when Moses went to take the children of Israel out of slavery, he gave them the phylacteries, which they are to put on their forehead and on their left arm, as a sign from mm. God that we are leaving the pyra pyramid system of slavery in Egypt, and we're going to the cube system of freedom in Arabia. And it must be remembered that there was no Judaism in those days. There was no Christianity. There was no Islam. All people, including the Israelite slaves, were pagans. And of course, the golden calf, basically the children of Israel reverted to the gods that they had known in Egypt yes. when Moses delayed coming back. Yes. So the purpose of this book is to show where exactly we were, and that 38 years, at least, of the uh, Exodus was in Arabia. Uh, Moses, Aaron, Jethro were at the Kaaba, which is today Mecca. And when God says in Deuteronomy 11 that the borders of Israel will include the desert to the south, that desert is Arabia. Very interesting claims about the geography. However, I want to get back to this little cube here. There are certain conspiracy theories, if you will, about the power of cubes. The claim is that all three Abrahamic faiths represent cubes one way or another. You see the Jewish small cube or, of course, needless to say, the Kaaba. But even the cross itself is mathematically needed in order to create a cube. The alleged reasoning for this is so-called secret geometry and mathematics. To go even further, they call it the vortex mathematics and people believe in numerology then. They say that you have to have dominion over the three six nine this in their mind symbolizes fire and how fire renews nature and introduces monotheism jethro was uh, a cousin because jethro's descended from midian uh, midian was one of the brothers of of isaac so you have 
uh, Ishmael, son of Hagar. And then you have the children of Keturah. So Midian is one of the children of Keturah. And uh, from Midian, you go down to the next generation, which is Reuel or Raguel. And one of the names of uh, Jethro in the Bible is Reuel. So he was probably in the Middle East. Many times people are named after grandfathers and great grandfathers. You have come far from Egypt, across the desert, on foot. He who has no name surely guided you steps. No name. You Bedouins know the God of Abraham? Abraham is the father of many nations. We are the children of Ishmael, his firstborn. We are the obedient of God. I, I will dwell, dwell in this land. So Moses, when he had to flee the best. Egypt after he killed the, the taskmaster who was beating the Jewish slave, the Israelite slave, he knew where he was going. He knew the geography. He was almost Pharaoh, so he had to know the geography. So he took the Israelites through the desert to what is today Nueva on the eastern shore of the Red Sea of uh, uh, Sinai. That is where they crossed. And this, By the way, there's no archaeological proof at all of an exodus in the Sinai Peninsula. The, but there is tons of archaeological proof in the Arabian Peninsula, the New Testament, uh, chapter 4, verse 25 of Galatians. It says, you know, that Mount Sinai and Hagar, which are in Arabia. Wow, true. I never noticed this, man. This news to me. Josephus speaks very clearly that uh, Sinai, uh, the, the Ishmaelites are there, the Troglodytes are there, uh, the children of Keturah are there, the children of Esau are there. Everybody is there, and they're all one family. And talk about the linkage between the, the Jews who wear phylacteries and this pilgrimage to Mecca. By the way, if Christians have ever come to Israel, so I'm talking now to the people who've been to Israel, they've yes. seen it on the flight. Yes. Because when, when, <clears throat> when, when people are still snoozing, and the sun comes up as the plane is approaching Israel, you see the Orthodox Jewish men go to the back of the plane and they pray, and they put on the phylacteries. And this is a tradition that goes back 3,500 years. Uh, by the way, it, very important, and I learned this in the Jewish Theological Seminary, we studied the New Testament. Matthew 23, verse 5. Jesus is criticizing the Pharisees, and he says, for all their, their works they do to be seen of men. They make broad their phylacteries and they enlarge the hems of their garments or the tzitzit on their prayer shawls. And it's, it's interesting indeed that today there are three types of phylactery. You have the size A, the size B, and the size C. And so okay. what Jesus was saying was, he wasn't saying don't put on the phylacteries, which I'm sure Jesus did. Uh, what he was saying was that if you have the $200 phylactery and you have the $400 phylactery and you have the $600 phylactery, which is humongous, don't spend your money on $600 phylactery. Spend it on the 200 and give the 400 to charity to feed the poor. Right. So, but it's something... It always has to be seen in context. Of course, Christians nowadays believe that Jesus came to abolish the law and therefore they would interpret that you don't have to put on those ropes. However, if you have a little bit of background knowledge and you understand the context of it, you will see that if anything, Jesus wanted people to be humble. It's in Matthew 23, verse 5. So we know that Jewish men in those days wore this. We know sure. that in the Greek Orthodox Christian tradition, there are priests who put on phylacteries. It's a yeah. slightly different Greek phylactery, True. but it all commemorates exactly the same thing. So the phylacteries have a very important meaning for Christians as well. So my question, and I'll ask it for everybody who's watching, why in the world would you put on, uh, strap a little wooden box with the scriptures from Deuteronomy on the inside and attach that to your left arm and to your forehead. Why would, why would you do that, and why, why would it be cube-shaped? Cube Perfectly cube-shaped. And so the contention in my book is that when Moses came to Pharaoh, and Ph remember, Pharaoh's God. Pharaoh was God in Egypt to the Egyptian people. He created the Nile, and he created this, and he created that. <laughs> and who's Moses? Moses is a guy who stutters. It's very hard to talk. And God says, give the people a sign. And the phylacteries were the sign. He gave Pharaoh the signs. 
you remember his rod became a, uh, a crocodile or serpent, ate the other crocodiles, right. or <laughs> and uh, the, the the leprosy in the chest. These are all signs. That, and then later the ten plagues, um, and Moses gave signs to the elders of Israel, and Moses gave signs to the people. You're talking about primitive pagan people who were shepherds, and they're saying to Moses, "Well, why should we listen to you?" You know, and so God, so this uh, phylactery has four pouches, four parchments. Uh, the first two are Exodus 13. Then you have Deuteronomy 6 and Deuteronomy 11. As said previously, Deuteronomy is mostly disregarded by nowadays Christians, unfortunately, which is the Mosaic law. Exodus 13, we are still in Egypt. We are still in slavery. We're about to flee. But Exodus 13 talks about the... You know, sign on thy arm and frontlets between thine eyes. And, I, you know, I know young people won't know the word that I'm going to say now, but there's a word that older people like you and I remember, which is, you know, you know gyroscope. A gyroscope I know takes us directly in the direction we have to go. And Moses is leading the children of Israel out of the pyramid triangular system to the cubic square system of freedom in the desert. And again, uh, Moses says to Pharaoh, let my people go so that they may circle me in the desert. The other five times, let my people go so that they may serve the Lord in the desert. But the first one is they should go around the circles. Now, Hajj is a pilgrim to Mecca. Hag is the Egyptian pronunciation. Hag in Hebrew means a holiday or going around in circles. This video is pretty convincing, man, I have to say. But what is more interesting to me personally is the description of fleeing the pyramid system and entering the cubical system. As I described previously, if we believe that the cube symbolizes monotheism, the pyramid, on the other hand, symbolizes elitism, symbolizes a secret society above the people, then, of course, symbolically, it would only make sense to flee that pyramid system to get out of Egypt, so to speak, and to go on Hajj, to pilgrim and to celebrate. As he mentioned here as well, Hag stands for holiday. So therefore, you're physically demonstrating that you're escaping bondage of slavery and you're entering monotheism. This is extremely powerful. <laughs> This day shall be unto you for a memorial, and ye shall keep it a feast, Hak, to the Lord throughout your generations. Ye shall keep it a feast, Hak, by an ordinance forever. Wow, man. Please, Jews and Christians watching, let me know what you think those passages mean. Amazing. Interestingly, this word hak can also be interpreted as a festival sacrifice, as the lexicon indicates. Muslims to this day perform annual sacrifice at the occasion of Hajj to commemorate the events that took place in the blessed life of Prophet Abraham. So does this mean that eight is on Hajj? I never knew this. Please let me know in the comment section if they are really on the same date. Wow. Hag in Hebrew means a holiday or going around in circles or going around in circles.
or going around in circles, or going around in circles. And is just another coincidence that the strap of the phylactery is wound seven times around the arm and the Muslims also circumambulate the Kaaba seven times during Hajj. This is too convincing, man. I might take Shahada right now. It's all and connected. so the first meaning really meant let my people go so that they may sacrifice to the Lord at the Kaaba in Mecca, which there was no Mecca at the time, which is the black stone. Jethro was the high priest. Moses was the understudy of the high priest. And so he knew why spiritually he was taking the children of Israel out of slavery from the pyramid system to the square system to Jethro. Then, of course, as you know, God finally says, no, you're not going to turn right. You're going to turn left. Instead of going to Mecca and Medina, we turn to the uh, Mount Sinai, Mount Horev, which, as you said very correctly, is within sight of Elat and Aqaba and the Red Sea. It is widely accepted among the Muslim sources that all prophets of God, including Prophet Moses, performed Hajj at Mecca. You can read more about it at Islamica Info. So I learned something absolutely mind-blowing today because I thought that the Islamic claim is that Abraham created the Kaaba and that's that. After all of those years, I believe that it was forgotten and then through Prophet Muhammad, it was reignited yet again. I didn't know that there was a tradition or that there was a claim of a tradition within the Islamic sources. I really believe that it only concerns Abraham and Muhammad. Amazing, man. It must be mentioned that the speaker Avi Lipkin is no friend of Muslims. He has avidly spoken against Islam and holds deep anti-Islamic sentiments. Then this is even more impressive because everything he said describes Islam. All of it. By the way, my people, <laughs> forgive me for being arrogant, are the Jews and the Christians together. Uh, if the, now my, my contention through my book is if we Judeo-Christians get Mecca and Medina, then we capture the flag and it is the termination of Allah, who I say is Satan, and sending the devil to the pits of hell for a thousand years. Wow. That's totally ridiculous. Complete contradiction. I mean, of course you want to promote Judeo-Christian values if you are pro-Israel. Yep. That, however, does not alter the fact that he makes some interesting points which indirectly prove the truth of Islam and teachings of Prophet Muhammad. May peace be upon him. Yeah, absolutely. Everything he described here proves Islam. Ultimately, the Islamophobes are the best promoters of Islam. The Prophet told the Jews at the time, we have more claim over Moses than you. Which under those circumstances makes absolute sense. Of course. No, Moses. We cannot see his whole purpose. Even Ishmael did not know that God drove him into the desert to be the father of a nation. Did the little boy die in the desert, my father? No. God brought Ishmael and his mother Hagar into a good land. The same God who lived on the mountain? It may be, my son. Uh, Moses, Aaron, Jethro were at the Kaaba, which is today Mecca. All right, guys. 
this is it for today's video. As I said, the Islamophobes usually make the best Dawis. They make the best promoters of Islam indirectly. This man here, no matter what he thinks of Islam, made fantastic points and demonstrated quite clearly how all of those religions are connected first and foremost. However, how Islam is holding the oldest traditions to this very day. You cannot say that about Judaism or Christianity. What was the most intriguing aspect for me personally is of course the cube symbolism and the coming out of the pyramid system, leaving behind the slavery and embracing God. Especially reflecting upon my own past spiritual experiences, I have to come to the conclusion that yes, there is an unseen realm an unseen realm of mathematics, geometry, sound and other fabrics that are totally beyond our comprehension. However, to manifest that unseen into this real world, we use symbolism. And this is why, especially within the occult, you see a wide array of different symbolism that tries to establish certain dark powers here in the physical. But the same has to apply, of course, for the forces of good, for the forces of God. And it truly appears that the cube is the clearest symbol of God here in this world. All right, guys, but this is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave the thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to support this channel, all the links are in the description box below. Thank you so much for your ongoing support, guys. As always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.